have just dropped off my um, little girl to school, and I'm continuing really from the last recording. And there's a, and and I oh, I had the opportunity of just saying what I've been thinking in in these um, recordings to my little girl that her life will be transformed if she just chooses to trust that God loves her. Try it and see instead of what the world does, which is choosing to trust that there is no God and and suffering the consequences of such a belief and and being so unhappy and and, and, and struggling with life and, and even suicide. And I had the opportunity, and, and she she was transformed. She she chose to instead of being preoccupied with not being early enough to play at school or, or do the things she wanted at school, instead she was just telling me about. Um, how mum and she were working out how to choose the best dog, one that for instance liked other pets. And this type of breed, these three breeds, actually are good because if you've got, and we've got cats, so you know, obviously one should choose from that sort of breed. And, and suddenly she was all happy and I said to her, you know, I was able to say, you've made it love, do you realise you're now happy? You've conquered the difficulty you were struggling with. And she got it, she got it. Yes, yes, she said, but she wants to go on to talking about the dogs. <laughs> but she got it. Um, but more that, more that she got was she just knew I loved her. And that's what happened by the time she, she waved goodbye. She knew that I loved her. And she, instead of just going off and ignoring me, which she has done many mornings, she somehow semi-lingered in looking at me and waving, which actually said, I love you. When our kids love us, we are over the moon. Have you any idea how God feels when you tell him you love him? If you could grasp that, you might hold with the trust and the love in him eternally and it's not might, it's will. You will hold with God for a day. And I was going to do this, this, uh, the reason I started doing this bit of uh, recording was to say, to pose the question, how do we, how do we trust this loveliness of God continuously in our life? How do we embrace this as a way of living? And, uh, well, I got the answer before I was able to give you the question. That's the way God works. <laughs> the answer's there before you make the prayer. Yeah, very often. I don't mean always, but I mean, you know, very often you realize, oh, of course, that's what I should be doing. It's been there all the time, isn't it? It's wonderful, you see. Now, in talking to you, I've made the wrong turn in traffic. I should have turned right at the last roundabout. And I'm now in a traffic jam, which I could have avoided. But I'm going to trust it for it totally. I'm not in a rush anyway. I've got plenty of time. I've got 40 minutes to get to the, the prayer meeting. And so the traffic jam can take its course. And it will be a blessing because I can talk to you. Do you see how the awareness of God a loving God that loves and cares for you is your heavenly Father transforms every moment of your day transforms your life here and now into heaven on earth thy will be done suddenly becomes a reality not something I have to do but is done by simply recognizing him as a wonderful Heavenly Father and what that means for instance this which I've just touched on I say for instance the instance which is how much of a joy we are to him especially when we say we love him or we're thankful or we appreciate something of him or we sing his praises or we long to bring him into someone else's life to rescue them as well. Someone else that he loves, not just us. Do you see, we start from selfishness. I mean, to find someone that loves you, that you value, is wonderful. Do you see? That's very selfish. 
you value it because in your selfishness, well, it meets your needs, even though it's in some sense an opportunity to give. And then you realize that from this selfishness has sprung a desire to give because you're so happy when you find what you think is, is, is such a thing that you were looking for. And in that selflessness, you start to seek out the truth of the happiness. I don't know what it is, but you find your way to this situation where suddenly you realize you want to believe and trust in wonderful God that loves you, loves all creation, perhaps is all powerful too, if that's what you feel it would be needed. Fantastic. And I'm dictating as I go along. If I get caught by the police for holding my phone, I'm going to be in trouble. It's not a good idea. It's not safe, is it? I'll put the phone down. That's good. Now I think I'm okay. Actually, you see, do you, do you see how you can meet a technicality? Treating the commandments law. You know, I mean, I'm now obeying the law in that I'm not holding my phone. But in fact, I'm still talking. I'm still talking to you and I've got the phone running. You're not talking back, so I'm not, in a sense, being interrupted. But hmm, it's not entirely as safe as uh, the law would hope to achieve. But the law can't achieve it. There's no way, you know, the law can see if I've got a device recording at the minute. I mean, the technology might improve in 10 years' time. Then maybe I'll say, ah, but you were listening. You had your phone on because we had this report. I mean, yeah, the world gets a bit tighter, doesn't it? Law tries to catch up with reality. But what we're saying is that, and I don't know if it's eternally so, but that it doesn't in the existence we experience. And that it's the movement of the heart that counts. It's that you come to want God that is your salvation. And you don't know how that's happened. And you don't know how to make that necessarily... what you worship but you've desired to worship it because you know that it embodies all that you value so it's constantly leaning on you that you want to put God first because you've come to want to love God and however it's come about you might understand or think you understand how it's happened or not it's a breakthrough that, in some sense, you didn't expect. And it in itself seems to be the gift of God, because suddenly you're convinced, you're choosing to believe, you're happy with the path that you're on, that it seems to give great promise of great happiness. It is giving great promise of happiness, that's what hope is. It's just another gift of God, isn't it? You didn't know how to achieve it. And you were looking for it. And in fact, you were alive. You had some you had some life in you. The hope was in you, you see, of life. Um, oh, um, perhaps even eternal life. Um, it's occurred to you that that's really, that would be nice. Oh, I hope that's so. I mean, sounds a bit far-fetched, eternal life. Everyone seems to die in this world, but... I wonder if it could be true in some way. And so it goes on, you see. Because you are a child of God, you're made of God. There's something of God in you, and it is this life. And life is hope. Life is this capacity to have and exercise an imagination that actually brings hope, and that the hope causes a volition where you start to launch on the improvement, as you see it, that you perceive, and then you find out whether this is an improvement or not, and your hopes adjust accordingly. And you find your all roads lead to Rome in the best of senses, that if all paths ultimately lead to eternal life, because there's something eternal about hope. This desire within you of the heart. What I'm saying is that hope is of the heart, whereas understanding is of the mind. 
Now understanding can lead to a hope, but typically your hopes dominate what you come to understand and trust and want to believe. This truck in front of me is occupying both lanes with good reason. He's so long he knows that on the curve of the roundabout he's going to have to use both lanes even though he's going straight ahead. So he signals right, occupies the central position holding both lanes to give him the option. Very rational. But you know, one doesn't want to be furious because he's blocking one's way. If you understand his dilemma and problem, when we know a person's story, we come to love them. We have come to understand them, we come to accept them and love them. This person that you're struggling with and striving with, you need to know their story. Listen to them. Don't keep putting them right. Listen to their story so that you see why they are the person they are. Come to love and understand them. This lady wants to cross, you see, and she's thanking me now. It's fairly busy traffic and she's very slow in moving. Um, not particularly old, but you know, she's slow in moving. Call me if you like. And uh, the man hasn't got furious behind her. He's, uh, geez, he's, he's stressed, he knows he's in a hurry. He'd do well to follow me instead of forcing his way on the inside lane. He's going to get stuck behind this truck, which I'm now passing and he is not. But then perhaps he's turning left anyway, who knows. Now the truck's going to have to take both lanes again. He's faced with another roundabout coming up. Actually, my um, car behind has passed me now. You see, there's all these things going on. Driving's quite interesting in that it's, it's like a sort of journey through life. You're interacting with people that you don't necessarily see again, but you can bless and be a blessing to and know it. And, and again, you get confirmation, you know, like the lady who says thank you. Uh, the person who's so relieved, you know they're relieved to get into the traffic which you've let them into. Now, if I can hold back in this truck and have an easier time, negotiating the roundabout, but, but that would require a double coincidence of that being so and my being in the right place at the right time. And that's in the hands of God, isn't it? I mean, it's just not something I can necessarily solve. I can imagine solving it like I am imagining it now. And perhaps that's what God will therefore do. You know, how much is God is in touch, how much is God in touch with who I am? I'm pausing here because I'm going to see what's unfolding. The roundabout itself is pretty jammed. There's traffic moving slowly across it. And some of it's going ahead and caught in the jam that's ahead. And the truck's about to negotiate how to get onto it. He's ahead of me now. I'm actually I'm not sure as I'm going to be able to help him. The person who's leading the column I in mean, is rather slow of taking the initiative, which may make this lane stay still for a long time. In which case the chap is in a hurry and the white car has been blessed by being in the correct lane. And I think that's going to be the case. And that's a good outcome, isn't it? I would like to have been the one helping the truck driver, but I don't need to be. God's getting him across without my help. And perhaps I don't need to be the one helping him. He's going to make it anyway. And he is. He is. And as it happens, he's getting round it without having to do the same manoeuvre as the last roundabout. It's a slightly different shape, this one. The other one was five crossroads, this is just four. Actually, the last one's called five crossroads too. And he's way ahead now. And uh, the white car's still beside me because he hasn't got across yet, but now he has. Now the white car's ahead of me as well. I'm in the wrong lane. I, I backed the wrong horse. <laughs> but I backed the right horse, didn't I? I didn't need to be blessed by being in the other lane. I'm presumably blessed by being in this one. Because I've got loads of time. Mind you, I don't want to be a frustration to the person behind me. Because they may be under great pressure to go to work. You know? Now, I can... I'm actually in the right-hand lane. Whoops. This person's going to let me in. I think, yes, I hope I haven't annoyed them. 
we're actually stuck on the roundabout here. I'm going round the roundabout instead of going the way I want to go. I'm going to actually end up doing the equivalent of a left turn from where I was as I approached. And that's worked. I've now made the left turn. I've avoided going straight ahead. I wanted to go and then didn't because of the jam. And I'm following the man in front who probably has the same understanding as me that we can bypass this trap. Do you see there's a calmness you can do in living that is not stressed? Now, it's easy for me at the minute because I actually do not have a time restriction at the minute. I've still got... Uh, oh, no, I haven't. Oh, that's interesting. I've only got eight minutes now to get to um, the prayer meeting. Seven minutes just changed on the clock. Seven minutes has dropped in. No, no, I don't have to get there on time anyway. Why do I give myself these constraints? God will bless whatever time I get there. And I'll move towards getting there on time because that's what seems to be the blessing to my narrow view. And if I don't, well, praise God. It's because I trust Him to have it the way it should be. Do you see it's the way to live? and peace and joy and blessing and all the goodness that you do value. Let me look at this. Yep, he left a gap anyway, I'll thank him. Hoping he did do it deliberately. And now I've joined the same stream of traffic that I did want, straight ahead, back there at the roundabout. And I'm much further ahead because of course I, I took an empty road that I happen to know. A by road. Some by roads are good, you see. Don't think that all by I mean, don't deliberately choose a by road if the main road is best, but if you know the by road is actually going to be the main road for you, much more economic and much better, it will take you. But be very sure, you have to be careful of by roads. Sometimes they don't come back to the main road. But having said that, some by roads lead to the true main highway. Yeah going to trust God either way. That's the real solution. That is the highway to be trusting God in the first place. But whether you're on the highway or not, He loves you and is well able to keep you on track. A track that's right for you. You're going to trust Him with all your heart, every day, all the time. You're going to worship the Lord, thy God. And I'm going to really be pedantic here and say, thy God. Actually, I've just caught my truck up. I'm only three. Wow. I'm going to pass him. I'm in the fast lane now, which is still moving. He's stuck on the inside lane. And I am alongside him and gone ahead. And my chap in the car that... I think he's just ahead of the truck somehow or other. But I'm alongside him as well. And I'm passing him. And I think I've got plenty of time to get to my prayer meeting. And I don't care if I get there on time or not. Except that, well, I'm acting as if that is what probably God wants. And I don't know. I don't know. I'm just loving, trusting him. And I've good reason to trust him. Excellent reason. I'm nearly 74. And he's cared for me and protected me and provided all these years. And I might point out while I'm talking to you, I've had three green lights in a row. Wow. <laughs> and how could you be so joyful about something so trivial as three green lights in a row? Because I feel God is with me. I feel the joy of his presence. I just love him to bits. Thank you, Father. And I want you to experience the same joy. Absolute joy. I've got a red light ahead of me, but I can go left here and take another route. Do you see? Everything is a joy. Everything is a joy. Everything is a joy. What an amazing friend. What 
What an amazing find. That's simply to trust in a loving, wonderful God, like God is Heavenly Father, and that I'm His child, His son, and He loves me, therefore, utterly transforms my life. What a wonderful thing that anyone has this option in some sense. It doesn't require my brilliant mind, <laughs> my great intellect. Just wanting to trust in what I believe to be all goodness. Sonified as my heavenly father. What an incredible gift. No wonder it said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. How could you achieve so much with ostensibly such a small thing as to simply imagine trusting in what goodness you can your goodness you can imagine. This world is so locked into their current religion they can't hear either. <laughs> and you think, oh, this is terrible. Why is. Oh, this is just staggering. They're trapped. They're all imprisoned and I can't let them out. Well, I'm going to trust that God can. Of course. I've got the tools to my at my disposal, have not I? Just the same as if I'm confronted with your disease. I have the tools at my disposal. I shall trust and speak the word and contribute, create goodness, and my God being wonderful and loving me and loving the person I'm caring for here will do the rest. The other 99.9999999 that is what hope can be that's what imaginative hope can be and that's what transforms the whole of reality into the miraculous and my hope is that that is literally true that I can speak a thing and it comes into being I can speak the love of God and the comfort of God and the warmth and the love of God into your life, His loving kindness, here and now to you in my embrace. And you receive it. And you do. You've already received it by my words. You're flirting with the idea. It's attractive to you. You reach out in hope because you are alive in Him. Heavenly Father, you're alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I've forgotten what the film was. It was this robot that uh, uh, loved this uh, young lady, and the young lady loved the robot, and he suddenly realized he's alive. He wanted to be alive. He's alive. He's full of joy. And that's what it, the film was really about that, I think. I mean, the man who wrote it, I don't know if he knew it or not. But the, everyone is acting like a robot. And they need to be alive. And they could be. It could be found somehow in the beauty of creation, in the beauty of nature. A plant found in a rubbish dump planet had hope in it. And he hoped to be alive. And he found he was alive. He was alive. Fantastic. What am I doing? I'm parking. I've got to concentrate now. I've arrived at the prayer meeting and it's one minute past nine and I'm just about to park behind my friend's car. My car has John 17 as the registration number, which of course I've engineered, I've bought and made. And the one I'm parking behind is my friend 
and his wife and their car is registered Jesus one and it's also a Camry and it's also a hybrid it's one year newer than mine and I'm not green with envy it's just fine just fine thank you heavenly father oh no it wasn't recorded Oh my goodness, thank you, Heavenly Father. <laughs> oh. Can I do it again, Lord? I will trust you that I can do it again. I will trust you that I can do it again. Trust you, my lovely God.
Thank you, Heavenly Father. Just thank you, Heavenly Father. Love you. Love you. Love you. Oh. Oh. Love you. Love on you, Lord. Love on you. Fill us with the joy of you, Lord. Just love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. loveliness and the work of your hands Lord in the morning in all of nature in all the people we meet may we see the goodness of you Lord may we detect your presence your hand 
on their life, your love and care of them. And may we in our tiny way, Lord, enter into that by being part of your wonderful creation and your incredible, incredible loving kindness to all, all, Lord, all that you love, all that you value. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Love you. Love you to bits, Lord. Love you to bits. Hallelujah. Love you, Jesus. Love you, Father. Hallelujah. Love you, Father. Into your holy place I stand in awe Of your saving grace Who am I That you would care for me I glorify The one who died for me Whoa!
Hey, we were ministering, Jeff was last night, ministering to a couple, and the, um, the chap was healed, but the wife was so concerned for him that she was still terrified that he was not, and she was introducing this incredible spirit of unbelief, and Jeff realized it's the wife that's the problem, <laughs> not the husband. And he did, he tackled that. And, and later in the evening I looked across the room and they were relating wonderfully and she was happy again. Oh, she was wow. restored, you know? Wow. But, wow! I mean, a horrendous oh. problem for you to the soul of so much pain. And when I started praying, I looked it up, he started crying. Yeah. A hero was trying to stop me. <laughs> he was trying to stop me. No, no, you don't worry. No, 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 the trauma, the trauma that she'd been carrying, all the weight she'd been carrying, worrying about him. She was, the spirit had got in underneath it. I believe it was real. It really is a spirit. Oh, it was, it was, I thought he was. He's going to shift it. And I had to believe he was going to shift it. Of course, well, she got healed the week before of the suppression oh, over wow. mine. And then she come back this week and he said, no, I didn't get healed last week. And I thought, what well, you did? <laughs> and that was bouncing back on her, of course. So she know. came up for something else and I started praying for that. And then he came up to support her. That's right. it over the head. <laughs> got in there, you're too deep in. God, dude, he's jumping about all over the place. You know, I mean, you know. yeah, you know. But in that sense, it was good that two of us were there. Because somehow, you know, we, and, and it was only a look. I don't mean we communicated other than a look, but, you know, I was sort of going, and he was thinking, yes, it's there, it's not him, is it? You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so horrible to watch a cry to rise out as he's saying, I'm healed, buddy, it's all right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and she's in tears, so <laughs> it, it was so hard to believe him. He couldn't believe that that could happen. He kept saying, I can't believe it's happened. <laughs> yeah. And then reinforced oh, against the cry. So it leapt into the wife. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she might have enjoyed being in that situation. Come on, do it. I thought, this is exhausting. <laughs> 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 but it had a good outcome. That's the point. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Great turn. That was a great turn. That's so funny. That's funny. Into our world. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Whoa. No. None like you.
later and you can see that um, I had recorded despite uh, my concern at about 20 odd minutes through um, that oh, I hadn't recorded what I'd said in the car but I had and it was still recording and it recorded um, a small part of the morning prayer meeting which is really a worship meeting um, that followed and those worship meetings were scheduled for an hour and a, or so and they could often go on for nearly two hours and it would be <laughs> dare i say it much of the same um and uh um i can't specifically remember this actual meeting i had jeff on my right playing his guitar and and, and leading really, and there's me um, fearfully dominating, I realize that, but um, I'm just away, and there's my friend Emma, you can hear singing, lovely Maori lady, she just worships, she's got a, a wonderful spirit. I so miss those worship times. Um, it there would only have been a handful of us there. I mean, it might have been anything from nine people to mm, could have been eighteen. 
but many are quiet. They 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 don't um, they don't dominate. Um, I would that they all dominated, but that they're all blessed. Well, that's just wonderful. And well, we just started. Jeff decided we'd had these weekday morning meetings at I think originally it was nine or then it became eight thirty. I'm not sure what it ended up at in the end. But it went on for ages and ages and I think it may still be going. Um things happened in in the church that um caused me not to be there. Um greatly miss it though. So miss it. So miss the worship. Absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely. Thank you, Dad. <laughs>